If you want to be successful in tech, you need to move fast and break things. That's exactly what I said to my boss before he fired me for deleting a production database. I should fire you and burn down your friggin' house! The relational database management system is one of the most successful ideas in the history of computing. SQL is 1970s tech that still forms the backbone of the modern big data world. Oracle dominates enterprise, while MySQL is the primary database for platforms like YouTube and Facebook. But SQL is by no means perfect. In 2023, there's a whole new wave of futuristic, cutting-edge, avant guard game-changing databases looking to move fast and break things. Some of them build on top of existing relational patterns, while others bring entirely new ideas to the table that you've never seen before. No pun intended. Over the next few minutes, we'll look at 15 crazy-ass new databases and talk about the problems they're trying to solve. First on the list, we have PlanetScale, which is not a new database, but rather a serverless platform for MySQL. Like I mentioned before, YouTube uses MySQL. However, back in 2010 when it was getting popular, it was extremely difficult to scale, at least for an app with millions of simultaneous connections. Instead of switching to a NoSQL document database, they developed a library called VTest, which makes some trade-offs to scale MySQL horizontally. And this is the technology that PlanetScale is based on. It provides a fully managed database that can scale with VTest and makes it available from a nice dashboard with SDKs to go along with it. And it also integrates nicely with tools like Prisma. It has a free tier and good pricing on the paid tier that they're likely losing money on. By comparison, a basic database on Heroku is 50 bucks, and it's unreasonably expensive on AWS and Google Cloud. PlanetScale is not the only company with this serverless database idea though. Yugabyte has its own open source solution for Postgres. Its goal is to scale infinitely in the cloud, but attempt to support all the native features in Postgres, which is not easy to do in a cloud native environment. You can actually use a multi-cloud strategy to host your database on multiple clouds at the same time, eliminating the dreaded vendor lock-in issue. But there's another option for scaling Postgres called Neon. It's currently in technical preview, but looks extremely promising. It's serverless and can scale down to zero, and has a highly polished admin dashboard to go along with it. And most importantly, it's written in Rust, which is the only thing that matters if you want to look cool in front of your friends. It also supports branching, which I think was inspired by another database called Dolt. This database would be like if MySQL and Git had a baby. Most importantly, it allows you to create branches from the main database where you can experiment with new data without breaking things. It makes it easy to analyze the diff between changes, and when everything looks good, the changes can be merged back into the main branch. And it's done with the same conventions found in Git that virtually every developer is familiar with. Dolt has a hosted option but it is quite expensive. They've raised $21 million, and because I'm extremely entitled, I demand they burn more of this money to give us a free tier. I just paid $8 for a dozen eggs and can't afford to put another $50 on my mom's credit card. Now, another SQL flavor I want to talk about is CockroachDB. It's been around for quite a while and was developed by ex-Google employees and is often referred to as new SQL. It's compatible with Postgres, but was built from the ground up with Go to scale horizontally in the cloud. It has a nice free tier pretty similar to PlanetScale, then becomes pay-as-you-go pricing after that. It's yet another great option, but you might also want to consider Foundation DB or Titanium DB as well, which are also in this new SQL class. But in some cases, you might prefer a lightweight alternative like Cloudflare D1. This is a brand new product that's still in beta, and basically it's a SQL Lite database that runs on the edge. Cloudflare already has its own key value store for workers, as well as R2 for object storage, but D1 allows you to create data on the edge that can be queried. One trade-off though is that native transactions will not work. However, they're taking a very cool approach to overcome that limitation by allowing developers to write stored procedures with JavaScript, which are just snippets of code that run directly in your database, which can be used to create transactions or other reusable queries. This approach has a ton of potential because historically stored procedures are a pain to work with, but if it's in JavaScript, even I could do it. Pretty cool, but it's not production ready yet. If you want something that's ready to go today, check out Zeta, yet another serverless relational database that's based on Postgres and Elasticsearch under the hood. What makes it special is that it treats your data like a spreadsheet. It feels kind of like a developer-friendly alternative to Airtable or Notion. And what's really awesome is that it has full-text search built in without needing to duplicate your data in some other service like Algolia. It has SDKs for TypeScript and Python and has a schema editor that makes it very easy to create and visualize relationships between tables. And it can also do branching like we looked at in DoltDB. For pricing, it has a solid free tier. Then it scales up in a linear way based on usage. But another tool that takes things one step further is 8Base. It's also a relational database that provides a GraphQL API for your data out of the box, making it similar to tools like Hasura. What makes it unique, though, is that it also comes with a low-code tool for quickly building front-end applications that connect to your back-end. It's like a back-end as a service that can also build your front-end. But that's enough talk about relational databases. Now we enter the post-SQL era with EdgeDB. It's a graph relational database that's powered by Postgres under the hood. When it comes to relationships, humans don't naturally think of columns and rows, but rather objects connected to each other, like a graph. Instead of defining 
defining tables like you would in SQL, you define types like you would in most programming languages. These types link to other types, which is awesome because it eliminates the need for joins and simplifies the way you make queries. Overall, it almost feels like an ORM for Postgres that allows you to think about relationships in a far more human-friendly way. Currently, it's open source and can be self-hosted, but there's a waitlist for their cloud service. Now, another relational graph-like database is SurrealDB. It's written in Rust, and I have a full tutorial on my second channel, Beyond Fireship. It's designed to support ACID transactions while scaling horizontally, but what I really like about it is how easy and flexible it makes data modeling. For the most part, it feels like SQL, but also uses arrows to connect nodes and edges, like you would in Cypher with a graph database like Neo4j. It takes the best elements of relational, document, and graph databases, and combines them into one easy-to-use API. Currently, it can only be self-hosted, but they do have a cloud service coming soon. The multi-model idea is nothing new, though. Another database pushing the limits is Fauna. It was created by ex-Twitter engineers who set out to build the perfect database. It's extremely easy to use, like a document database similar to MongoDB, but unlike a document database, it supports features like native joins, which is the number one missing feature in document databases. And that means Fauna is more well-suited for complex relational data, like social graphs. To interact with it, it has its own custom query language called FQL, but also comes with a GraphQL API. It is a closed source product, so you can't self-host it, but its fully managed service has a nice free tier. Another new database you've likely never heard of is MemGraph. It's a drop-in replacement for Neo4j, which is the gold standard for graph databases, but MemGraph is focused on building real-time data pipelines. Like Neo4j, it can be queried with Cypher, but it's written in C++ with a memory-first architecture that claims to achieve better performance. Overall, it looks like it would be a great choice for building something like a real-time analytics platform. Next up, we'll look at KeyDB, which is a faster alternative to the already extremely fast Redis. It was recently acquired by Snap, a company that needs to fetch data as fast as humanly possible. It can handle over 1 million operations per second on a single node, which sounds like a lot to me. But it's not something you would use as your primary database, rather it's mostly used as an in-memory cache to duplicate high-priority data from another database, making it load faster for the end user. It also has a library called ModJS, allowing you to extend the database with your own custom commands and functionality with JavaScript. Another specialty database to look into is Melee Search. The full-text search engine space is dominated by tools like Elasticsearch and Algolia. Melee Search is an open-source Rust-based alternative that makes it easy to implement an awesome search feature into your app. It's not a primary database, but instead a place where you would duplicate data that needs to be searchable in complex ways, like you can fine-tune different parameters to control which attributes have a higher ranking in the search. In addition, it has a bunch of client libraries like Instant Melee Search that can quickly implement a search feature in a front-end web application. And finally, that brings us to MindsDB, a database that integrates popular machine learning frameworks. It created a concept called AI tables that embed predictive models directly into the database. At first glance, it feels like SQL, except you can use it to write statements that train machine learning models. When the model's done training, you can then use select to make predictions from it. So basically, it provides an integrated way to handle the ML ops lifecycle. And it can also integrate with your existing machine learning models or those from third parties like Hugging Face or OpenAI. In the not-so-distant future, I believe embedding AI directly into databases will be a huge thing. And MindsDB gives you an idea of how that could look. And now, you have 15 different futuristic databases to choose from for your next failed side project. Good luck with that. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about awesome serverless databases like Firestore and Supabase, support my work as a pro member on Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.